Hey everybody. So last time what we did is we talked about this method of creating our paper cut effect. And I showed you how I used the pencil tool and kind of piled things on top of each other. Now for today, I'm going to show you the other effect I do. So I'm going to go to file new. Once again, we are doing 17 by 11 and I will keep the same orientation. Okay, I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see. Now, excuse my artboard. I've got some things already open. So just like last time, I like to keep my layers open. And I like to have my beachy colors or my color palette that I'll be using ready to go. So just like last time, the first thing that I am going to do is lay down kind of my bottom color, that dark color that's going to go at the bottom. Okay, and I'm going to pick this guy, but remember last time we made him darker, so I am going to be changing the color just a little bit by going down on my color picker. Okay, now as we go, we'll lock him down because we don't want him moving around. And we are ready to start. Now this time what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using rectangles in certain colors. Okay, so here's my next rectangle. Actually, I want you to be that color. Or that color. Let's do that color. And then I'm going to be using the pencil tool to kind of cut my shapes out of the middle. So we're, it's almost like we're going to be looking down into a cavern. So I've got my Pathfinder tool open because it's going to be important. So I've got a rectangle and I've got my pencil. So I'm going to start by drawing my shape. It doesn't have to be anything crazy, but I'm starting small because my other layers, because remember we need five, they're going to get bigger. Okay, so I've got those both done. I'm going to highlight them both. Remember our other layers locked, so we're good to go. And what we're going to do is we're going to minus front because our shape's on top. It's going to give us that nice hole. Okay, and I'm going to lock that guy down and we're going to move on to the next one. Ooh, and as you can see, my stroke was on and I kind of want to turn those off. So let me grab this guy. Goodbye, stroke. We don't need you for this project. Oh, much better. Okay, so I'm going to lock that down and we're going to go to our next shape. So I'm going to pick the next color up. This time I'm going to skip one to give a little bit more of a difference. Okay, pull it across. Now, if you want to see what's going on underneath, what you can do is kind of switch these guys so you can see your shape below. So right now my stroke's on and my fill is off. Here is my pencil too. I'm going to make like the next level. And it's okay if some of these kind of overlap each other. I think it makes it more interesting. And you can see our shape. Okay, and we're going to highlight both. And we are going to minus front again. Now, if I switch these, you'll be able to see that the color is filled in. Now, because I go a little bit outside of my box, you know, I always have wiggle room and I can always adjust these, make them bigger, smaller later or as we go. So I'm going to lock that down. I'll give it a lock and go to the next one. Now, remember, like I said, my students are required to do five of these. So let me switch my stroke. Okay. And this will be our third layer. Okay. Good to go. Going to be highlighting both. Minusing front and then changing, switching the color. Okay. So there we go. We've got three layers on top. Let's do these other ones super quick. Oh, forgot to lock down, but I'll do that here in a second. Lock down that one. Switch it. Use my pencil tool. Like I said, it's okay if they overlap in places. Okay, that makes them a little bit more interesting. Okay, highlight both. Minus front. Switch my colors. There we go. Okay, and one more. So lock that down. Let's 
change my color get it so I can see one more shape Got a little funky there with that last line there we go <laughs> and I can always play with those later too so let me highlight both minus front switch my colors okay and let me click off it so you can see so now you can see that I've got kind of that cave effect like we're looking down into it now just like before I'm going to grab one of my fish let's do I don't know let's do something like a crab this time okay so I'm going to copy so edit copy oops sorry wrong one this one Edit, paste. Okay, here's my little crabby. I'm actually going to make them a little bigger. I'm not holding shift right now, sorry. <laughs> it's a big no-no, but you should definitely be doing it while you're do while you're working on it. Okay, and I'm going to lock my layers that I'm not using. Now I'm going to be putting him on the deepest layer, so I'm going to unlock that. I'm going to highlight them both. And actually, before I do anything, I'm going to bring him down so they can kind of connect together. He does not need to be locked because I want them both highlighted. Okay, and I'm going to be putting them together. Let me move him out just a little bit. There we go. Okay, and I'm going to unite those two so he's hanging out down there. Now let me get one more fish. Let's do the stingray this time. paste make him a little bit bigger yeah definitely make sure you're holding shift it will help Just give him a little turn okay so I'm going to lock down our crab layer and I'm going to open up this other layer this time I'm going to move him down by this other layer. I'm going to grab them both. Okay. I'm going to unite. Now because the stingray was black, it changed. So all I have to do is come over here and grab the color that I already had it on. Okay. And as you can see, it changed back. So let's add our drop shadow now. Let's see how well our effect's going to work. So I just ungrouped those. I'm going to highlight everything. And I'm going to go stylize, drop shadow. Okay, and you can see what it looks like right now. So right now I have it offset to the negative, which is fine. But I think I'm going to come in here and put it back to the positive. So I'm going to give it a little shaping, if you will. It's going to take it a second to figure it out. Remember, when you do do drop shadows, it kind of freaks it out a little bit. That's why I like to do it at the end, kind of all at once, so I'm not constantly playing with it later. Okay, and you can see I moved it to the side. Now, I do think I want to change one of these numbers just slightly so I can get a different effect. But remember, all of this stuff is your choice. So when you do this area, you're going to choose whether to do it or not. Okay, so I'm going to press OK. And if you look now, I'm just taking a quick peek. Because I didn't unite these two pencil lines very well, you can see I kind of have a funky edge. I can come in and fix this later. So, for example, right now, oops, sorry, wrong touch. Okay, if I wanted to, I could zoom in. Sorry, my Wacom board is being a little slow. Is being a little touchy but I could go in here and kind of play with these anchors and reshape them um, 
to get a nicer, cleaner line because as you can see, they're looking a little funky right now. So there's a bunch of different options that you can do to kind of fix these. We can delete some of these angers. So don't feel like you're stuck with this shape. Like I said, you can always kind of change it out later. So this is just my delete anchors. So like that one is smoothed and ready to go. And that was that layer. So now if I go to this one, you can see that I can move, manipulate. I can add anchors if I want to. Right now this is the pen tool. So then I can come and like play with them later. So you do have options if you do find little things like that that kind of drive you nuts. Okay, so let's take a look. And it's looking pretty good. Like we're staring deep into an ocean pool. Okay, some more fish and some like marine plants. And this would be good to go. Okay, guys, good luck.